would you live in the city that literally boats on water? That could be kind of interesting. Uh, we kind of almost do. All yeah. right. And tonight's big idea, Linda Schmidt shows us the futuristic new plan to build floating cities for thousands of people. cities and communities around the world are struggling to cope with rapid population growth, limited space, erosion, and rising waters. There is a sense of, of crisis. So Mark Collins Chen and his company, Oceanics, have come up with a new type of floating cities. The futuristic idea was depicted in the 1995 movie Waterworld. Those who survived have adapted to a new world. The movie was doom and gloom, but Chen's brainchild is hopeful. We very strongly believe that for most coastal cities, this option will be considerably cheaper and better for the environment. Modular neighborhoods would be built on land and then towed into the water, connected together and anchored with a reef built with a material called bio-rock to prevent the floating cities from drifting out to sea. It's a material that actually grows in seawater, like concrete. It's harder, actually, than concrete. And with age, or what you call the moorings, uh, what's holding this down, actually grow heavier and heavier with age. The moorings would also attract sea life, generating and protecting the marine ecosystem. They would be close to shore, using drones, ferries, and catamarans for transportation to land, and bicycles, scooters, and boats to move around the modular neighborhoods. To be clear, we're not in the middle of the ocean. We're very close to major cities. So you need to think about these really as satellites or extensions of existing cities. We now know how to grow food anywhere, anytime, 24-7, 365. Chen is working with experts in agriculture, water, energy, architecture, and a host of other fields. At first, the communities would consist of up to 300 residents living and working on about five and a half acres in six buildings. Eventually, that would grow into a city of 10,000 people. The buildings would be kept at below seven stories to create a low center of gravity and resist wind. And the floating city would be completely self-sustaining with solar and other renewable energy. We want to look for the opportunities to capture water and reuse water um, and see how that fits in with the energy systems. And Chen says no matter how much the water rises, the floating cities are safe and would also survive megastorms like super Storm Sandy. It doesn't matter how much it rains, it doesn't matter how much the water comes up, this part will stay stable. So the, the floating cities themselves will rise as the water's rising. Exactly. They're exactly. not going to be flooded. No, they cannot be flooded. So you think this is a crazy idea? Well, the United Nations doesn't. Chen, along with scientists and engineers, met with UN representatives here back in April to work together on developing self-sustaining floating cities. Yes, there is something crazy about it, too, and I think it's good crazy. MIT <laughs> professor Nicholas Macris attended the United Nations Roundtable. He is the director of MIT's Center for Ocean Engineering. I think it's completely feasible. It's doable. There's all other kinds of structures that float that are basically city-sized already. You've got uh, cruise ships. You've got aircraft carriers. These are really like floating cities. So in some sense, the technology is already there. It's just tweaking a little bit to turn it into something that's a, 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 an urban environment. And don't forget, most thought it was crazy to try and put a man on the moon. The new frontier is the water. It's just a piece of the toolkit for cities to address this. Well, I think it's great because it's it's giving people uh, something to dream about. It's uh, hope for the future. Linda Schmidt, Fox 5 News. Wow. All right, head to our YouTube page to see other big idea reports from our Fox 5 team.